Okay, so here is the old oil feed line where it broke. Um, so this one, I think because it goes right here on top and then it, it bends over this turbo blanket. And I think because of the heat, um, it got stiff, the plastic, and then whenever I moved it, it just snapped. Uh, so I got another one, same length. Um, the only difference is this one has female ends on both sides uh, uh, for dash four AN fittings. Uh, so one side I already have the um, dash four AN fitting on a turbo. On the back side, I went ahead and bought a little straight adapter. So this one has um, eight MPT thread uh, down to a quarter. I mean a dash four AN fitting. Uh, for this end right here and I, I've got the wrenches right there 13 and 17 so this one is gonna go behind the engine where the oil pressure sensor is I'm just going to take it off and just put I also have a T so okay so th these are just hand tightened but uh, engine block in uh, then this one to the oil feed like that and then I have two more, so one of them is just going to be blocked, and the other one is going to have the oil pressure. So, not that one, that one circles around the engine, over to the top. Onto the turbo. The oil return is still there. So it's just the oil feed. Now to put on a battery and crank it, see if it's gonna leak or if we're all good. Put the charge pipe. Okay, first start. So I have the truck lifted on uh, jack stands, I took off the tires, and just taking a quick look at what we're going to do. Uh, so for one, we need to remove the shock because um, that's mounted like right on the lower control arm and it's also limiting our drop. Um, so you can see on the rubber. <laughs> They're pretty jacked up, but I'm gonna dispose of them other than the shock this uh, Stabilizer bar you could tell that the tire was rubbing right here whenever I turned uh, But I'm gonna have to take this off because again um, It's too close to the where I'm gonna mount the airbag so and then besides whenever I release all the air that this suspension drops as much as it can go uh, this one is going to be like way up, so I don't know if it'll hit right here or whatever, but for now I'm going to take it off. Why is it a video? This shock right here, I already took off the bottom bolt, but this shock right here is the one that's making all the noise. Check it out, there was no upper rubber mount, so 
This is the bottom side. This is the top where the nut was. It was pulling the shock in whenever it bounced up. So look at the thread. All right, so once I have the, cause right now I'm still test fitting, but if this was the sheet metal, you know, that's how it would align. I would weld it right here on the lower control arm. Right here has a nice place to sit cause it's on the, uh, where the links would go, stabilizer link. Uh, right here, I'll get some more sheet metal, just uh, pre-cut it and then just fill in these little holes. Same for the other side. Um, now right here it's all the way down extended so it's gonna go up and um, you know it's gonna level out that's where the bag is gonna sit right there on top and the other one would go from right here the bottom of the chassis uh, just basically just go like a, a D basically like a capital D um, just have the six inch diameter plus a little lip so I can weld underneath the chassis and then I'll make like a little wall around it that way it has like it doesn't flex so much so it could be welded onto the chassis on the bottom and then all the way around the basically like a cup uh, but that's going to be the top of it I'll drill out some holes for the bolts the mounting bolts and then the Schrader valve but uh, this is the bag uh, this is the one from Max Beating Rods it has like, like a little logo on the bag as well but this is the max beating rods. Um, if you take off the cap, once you press it, like all like deflated, it goes down to about two three quarters of an inch, like two and three quarter, about three inches, something like that. And then if you measure the width, it's about seven and a half, seven and a half to eight inches in width. So it fits in there. Um, you know, it has plenty of space. That's a cardboard. Um, so I don't want to bend it quite yet, but from here, I'll bring this I can transfer it over to our sheet metal, you know, mark the lines. Right now I have tape, so that one's the passenger side, and then I have this other side for the driver's side, so I can cut both of them, um, and then I'll still have to cut the tops. So there's the bottom of the frame. This is the bag aired out, like I squ squeezed it. Uh, and that's pretty much all the way down or all, all the way up it could go. Um, so there's still some room for the bag to, you know, be free. Um, on the bottom, that's pretty much how it sits almost. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just lower the sh uh, controller. So you see it's kind of like a straight motion. And that's it. A ver qué piensas tú. Mira. Este es por arriba. Pum. Por arriba. ¿Entendés? No, es que estaba como bien cerquita es aquí este corner. Pero eso es todo, like, max height. ¿Me entiendes? Pega, pero no en el... En el in a placa de ese de fierro. Mira. Manches. Por abajo se mira más cerquitas. Yo le quería hacer una... Una cerchita, una little plate de este corner aquí. Para acá. Pero no sé si hacerle nomás como aquí este corner y otra que de aquel lado. Como two walls. Porque no le puedo dar por aquí. Traen cerquitas. Pero, mirándolo. I can como hacerle flat aquí, square off y luego ponerle y luego por aquí nomás hacerlo como más cortito como una 3 quarter inch y luego venirte para atrás y pa, pum, grandecito no sé si todo el, este porque aquí son que como unos 5 uh, inches más o menos como hasta acá ah. 
sí, con 5 inches. 5 inches para arriba y luego pues tiene 5 inches es el este. 5 and a half, 6, 7 and a half, 8. Lo hice de 8 el play, so tiene como half inch aquí. So, ya sabes, ya sabes. Okay, so let's take a look at the metal that I welded onto the lower control arm. Uh, so right here I added this little plate and welded. Uh, not only is it welded from the outside of the control arm, it's also welded from the inside. I tech welded these pieces together and then I took off the top plate and then I just welded the whole inside and then I put this one back and then I welded everything together. Uh, there's a small piece over here as well that I used to fill in. Um, just welded the whole plate and then on this other side as well let's see if I can turn on the flash alright so there's, there's a fly around um, I welded this side as well as the inside I didn't want to weld right here in the surface where the threads are for the shock I'm not sure I'll, I'll weld it later on but I'll come back to that and then some more welds over here uh, not the prettiest, but I know they're strong enough to to hold so um, And then for the top one I did the same thing. I just welded these gussets right here and then the 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 bottom plate just welded all this this is quarter-inch steel, so I don't think it'll bend um, It's just Yeah it's just uh, extra reinforcement. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, lay a few coats of paint just to cover up the weld so it doesn't rust so quickly. Uh, and then uh, let's go inside and uh, take a look at the bags. These are the bags that I'm using, the Max Beating Rods. I got this as a kit that comes with the brackets for the rear. This would hook up to the frame, the chassis, and then right here to the top of the bag. And that would be the bottom plate with the U-bolt, uh, ghost bolts, and that would be wrapping around the drive shaft, the differential. Um, but here are the bags, like, fully aired out and compressed this can go as low as um, 3 inches and then fully extended is about 12 um, <clears throat> so they have uh, two bolts right here on top these are half inch you know threaded for the bottom the same thread uh, just a 3 8 dash 16 uh, single bolt so this is the ones that I'm installing and check it out right here in the front. We also have the uh, logo of the brand, the Max Spinning Rods.
All right, so there's the airbag. And right now, it's... Okay, that's as far low as it'll go. All right, so the max speeding rods includes this uh, air tubing cutter. Um, so before I, before I show you guys this one, I want to show you guys like uh, why you need it. So right here, you can see I already tried cutting with some different sets of pliers. And no matter how sharp it is, it'll, it'll squeeze the tubing. Like that I'll try a different different set. I think these are the Gabriel. Uh, so these are supposed to be good. Uh, I mean Garner. What is it? Supposed to be decent pliers, uh, but it still squeezes the tubing, and even the scissors makes it harder to cut and still imperfect to cut. But um, using this uh, you know, tubing cutter, so it has a real sharp blade right there. So just Put it right there on the line and just just squeeze it. You might want to like just rotate like a little bit, but check out that like that cut, just perfect, nice and squared. I'll do it again. Just squeeze it straight like that. And then this one first connection to the airbag. Just pop it in here. Push it straight until it bottoms out, and this will hold it in place so you, it doesn't pull out. I just uh, finished installing the air compressor, so check this out. I put it in, th in this corner of the engine compartment. I didn't want to put it underneath uh, in case it rains, water. It's protected in this uh, case. It's like ABS plastic. And the compressor is inside it does have ventilation on on both sides um, so it can breathe now the compressor itself uh, produces high like output so it should um, it should like you know fill up the bags quite easily uh, it does have a max PSI of about a hundred and something PSI I'll check the uh, the listing but the way I went about it is just uh, straight from the compressor small piece of tubing with a T fitting going down to the first uh, the passenger side airbag and then just uh, continue the tubing to the other side I just uh, teed right here going towards the driver's side and then I just uh, the tubing just uh, took it inside through the firewall inside the cab all right and in here is where the airline comes in and then the power for the uh, gauge that one turns on with the key uh, So I'll show you guys real quick So we have light All right. We also have the push button Right now like it's empty You can release the pressure But So yeah, so that's pretty much the system. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install the tires. Uh, but before I do, I need to remove, I already took off the driver's side, which is this uh, pin and the screw, the adjuster. Uh, unlike the 1500 Silverados that might have the uh, either strut assembly or spring and shock. Uh, oh my God, it's overheating. This is gonna be uh, first time lowering it. I already removed the jack stands. Uh, so we'll see what it does. The airbags don't have any air pressure, so they're empty. So we'll see what hits first. Slow. Okay. resting on the jack mm. here's the airbag it has a little bit of a uh, air pressure left inside okay so it's sitting on the jack right there it's just a pr 
perfect ride height. I mean, I think it matches the back. But I need to air the airbags so I can remove the jack. I know it wants to go lower, but like driving, I think that's good. And then we'll see how low we can go. As to the torsion keys, I have that modified uh, bolt on there, so I can adjust it. Uh, let's go in. Stop right there. Okay. Beds are good. Sat on the, on the jack. <laughs> but the bags are empty though. Alright, guys, I think I got it now. Uh, so I just need to um, just finish adjusting uh, the torsion keys. Uh, that's just going to, like, so I can set that one as, like, my lowest point you know because right now they're pretty loose so the lowest point is just sitting like on the floor whatever hits first so i can tighten those up uh to where it's just nice like right before it hits like on the ground or whatever uh and then when i air it up it'll it'll be like nice and ready to lift uh if i just remove or like loosen up all the adjust adjusting bolt on the torsion key uh, it's just gonna sit completely dead, you know, and it's just gonna be a lot of weight on the airbags So we just want a little bit of tension uh, coming from the torsion bar, but right here. This is uh, About 60 psi So I just need to tighten up the torsion key just a little bit more, but this is 60 psi on the bag uh, So look at that gap right there It's pretty much straight with the rear if uh, well right here we'll see the gap right here on the back one i think it has a smaller gap slightly smaller but i'm gonna set you guys up <clears throat> to check that out nice <laughs> so I'd have to like finish tightening everything up look at that very nice right I'd have to tighten everything up and just take it out here or take it into town and so I can show you guys a uh, lifted and dropped but that looks very very nice very nice Alright guys, and here's the finished truck. Uh, so we'll just take a look at the front on the back. I didn't want to install the airbags in the back because I had already did the flip kit and notched the frame. So although the brackets that I got with the bags were for the rear, I had already notched the frame so the, it, it wasn't going to work. So I had to redo brackets. You know, and uh, I had just got some bow tech shocks, so and it rides so perfectly smooth. I didn't want to mess with it, and I like the height, you know, the gap on the tire to the fender. On uh, the front one, um, <clears throat> you know, before the airbags, it was slightly higher. You know, right now we kind of closed down the gap, we're at a balance between, you know, like because on the torsion bars, I still, I Remove the original bolt, uh, the bolt and spacer where the torsion key sits. I removed that one and I, you know, modified a new one more towards the bottom so the torsion key can lower and gives us a lower stance to begin with. Uh, so after that, the airbags are just, you know, the, the t torsion bar is one that's, you know, keeping some tension up and then the airbag is the assist. So right here, it is about 60 psi. Uh, and you know it kind of looks balanced with like the rear tire you can see the gap very nice like small gap and then right here small gap as well 
So I'm going to set you guys up in the tripod so you guys can see uh, as I air out this one. So it only has the release on the gauge with it, which is like a small push button uh, release hole. So it'll take about a minute. So just bear with me. I'll speed up the video, but so you guys can see the gap closed down. All right, so look at that now. So it lowered quite a bit. I put the spray can right there just so you can see reference uh, how much it lowered. Um, I would say a few inches, yeah. Uh, the gap over here was at least two and a half. But I'm gonna say about three inches, uh, somewhat. And if we look at the whole like picture right here, it looks like a beautiful truck. Like a, it has a nice stance. Uh, looking at the at the rear, still has a. About two and a half inch cap, and over here is a lot closed. Absolutely awesome! So, really happy with the way everything came out. The fabrication done on, on the uh, on the lower control arms. Uh, just couldn't be happier. Uh, I borrowed a welder because I didn't have my own, uh, and it was a. Um, I mean, it, it was a flux core. Uh, I wish I had a, a gas and solid wire, less spatter. But overall, just, you know, the work, I think it works out. You know, the stands, I completely love it. There's bacon. So the truck looks way better now. Yeah, the truck feels like so much shorter. Like right here, it's, it's about like, you know, waist high. You know, <laughs> I burned myself on the control arm. I welded and then I reached under it and I burned myself. But um, <clears throat> for the compressor, all the um, like the tubing, uh, the, the the T's right here, so easy to install. You know, just really easy. Uh, the installation comes with the diagrams just to give you a reference on how to install it. Uh, and I put you know the tubing going inside and I have the gauge uh, just to keep an eye on uh, how much PSI I need to you know drive around comfortably um, and yeah just airing it out like it just it just sits nice just very nice and this is sock suspension I know I, I do need tie rod ends and all that stuff uh, but we'll get to that for now let's appreciate you know the the work the airbags you know huge thanks to uh, max speeding rods for you know being a huge supporter of the channel you know sponsoring some of the uh, videos that you guys see and enjoy uh, the airbags you know these are the uh, they're about 2600 uh, pound load uh, each so right here we got a combination of about 5,000 uh, max load and they can go as short as about three inches to as high as about uh, 12 this is a heavy duty truck it has an eight lug suspension and all that so you know two of these bags and then that compressor effortlessly fills them up very nicely it has a max psi of 100 uh, something like that uh, so that's plenty of air to go to the bags so i was just uh, worried you know how long it was going to take to either fill or release and it's about a minute 30, a minute 40 from 0 to 60 PSI. So, and that's enough to drive around. And then once you get to wherever you're going to get, uh, it, it is like a small valve on the, on the gauge. So when you push it, it, you know, it takes a second. But uh, it, it, like, it completely airs out. Like right here. It's just very, very nice. But overall, you know, like I said, huge thanks to Max Bean Rod for uh, supporting the channel. Uh, I'll leave the links in the description to some of these products. I, you know, highly recommend the products. I've had great success with, you know, their turbos and, you know, this is going to be fun as well. Uh, there's some more events coming up in the future, so we'll see about preparing this truck. But overall, guys, 
But leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys think about the project right here. And uh, so yeah, I know this project took uh, a good week, week and a half or something. Uh, but overall, worth it. You know, like I said, I did borrow a welder. So thanks to, you know, like a lot of people that helped me out with this. Uh, I also borrowed a truck because mine was uh, down. So I borrowed a truck to bring the 4x8 sheet. It's a quarter inch uh, hot rolled. Uh, and if you guys look in the marketplace, sometimes like I found some for $180 a sheet. So wow, that's great. You can find them as, you know, between two to $300 for a full sheet like this. Uh, you don't need like this much. Uh, if I were to cut, like if I were to count how much I used out of this sheet, I would say about max about 16 inches by four feet something like that but that's like you know the top the bottom control and and, and all the pieces around it but uh yeah so you know with the welder and uh just all the work just you know just guessing i've never done this before but you know i kind of like have a sense of how it should work uh and this is what i came up with and it kind of works so i'll keep an eye out on some of the weak points or you guys let me know but overall leave me a comment hit that thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this video and uh, subscribe and i hope to see you guys on future videos i'll do more paint videos I'll, I'll talk more about that in another one so thank you guys so much for watching peace out